Hi guys and welcome to another episode of Attorney Job Logger, Law for the Everyday Layman. Today we continue with part 2 on the Revised Corporation Code. Now uh, take note, I will not be discussing the old corporation law. Uh, if ever I do mention it, it will only be in uh, reference, no? Uh, for reference purposes. I will be devoting the discussion to the current law or Republic Act 11232, otherwise known as the Revised Corporation Code. So if you like my videos and you want to see more, please hit the like button on this video and subscribe to my channel. Please also remember that this is uh, only for educational purposes and is not a substitute for proper legal advice or for studying and understanding the law. Okay? Now we will talk about classes of corporations, no? the different kinds. Now I began the discussion on this in the last episode no? where I mentioned the difference between public and and private corporations. Now remember that a corporation is created by operation of law as stated in the definition. No? So to exist, a corporation requires a special grant from the state which comes from the legislature or congress. No? So uh, this special grant for a corporation to exist can uh, either come through a general law no? for the case of private corporations and that general law is Republic Act 11232 or the Revised Corporation Code. Okay, So that's for private corporations. Now in case of public corporations, they can only exist again through the special grant from the legislature which in the case of public corporations is through a special law or charter. Okay, That goes for public corporations or GOCCs or government owned and controlled corporations okay so uh, public corporations are organized by the state to perform functions to govern portions of the state or functions properly belonging to the state but are non-governmental in nature and under section 4 of the code they shall be governed primarily by the provisions of the special law or charter creating them or applicable to them supplemented only by provisions of the revised corporation code meaning the revised corporation code you do not apply that right away to the public corporation okay the um, law that will apply to them their rules they will be governed by the special law but if that special law is lacking or if there is a provision that in the corporation code that may be applied supplementarily no to fill in a gap or uh, to by analogy no then the, that's the only time you use the co revised corporation code okay you, they may only be used if it is applicable okay remember also that as i mentioned in the previous video that the test of uh, whether a corporation is a gocc or not is whether or not the government owns it okay pursuant to Liban versus Gordon okay and in case of a stock corporation if the government owns majority of the stock and if non-stock corporation majority of the members okay now an example of a public corporation no would be of a GOCC rather no would be a GSIS no government service Insu uh, insurance no system okay so uh, now we also have what is known as a uh, quasi-public corporation. No, these are private corporations which have accepted from the state the grant of a franchise, okay, or contract. No franchise or contract involving the performance of public duties, okay, public duties, but they are organized for profit, okay. They perform public functions, but they are organized for profit. Okay, it is a private corporation performing functions with a public interest. Okay, it's different from a uh, different but uh, somehow similar to a quasi corporation, no? Quasi public, and now we also have a quasi corporation, no? And a quasi corporation, which is a uh, body or a municipal society, which even though it is not vested with the general powers of a corporation it is recognized by uh, either statutes or immemorial usage as an aggregate corporation with precise duties which may be enforced or privileges which may be maintained under the law okay 
So that's it for uh, public corporations. Private corporations, on the other hand, no, they are simply corporations organized by private persons. And Section 3 of the law classifies them as either stock or non-stock corporations. Okay? Stock corporations are those which have capital stock divided into shares, no? And authorized to distribute those shares, I uh, authorized to distribute to the holders of those shares dividends or allotments of the surplus profits on the basis of the shares held. Okay? So uh, there is capital in that corporation, then you let's say uh, 1 million and then you divide that into shares, you give the shares to the stockholders and on the basis of the shares that the stockholders have, they receive dividends. No, that's the return of their investment. Okay. All other corporations, according to Section Three, which are uh, which do not fall under the previous definition, all other corporations are non-stock corporations. However, of course, you may say that that definition is vague. So this is further uh, defined by Section Eighty Six, which defines a non-stock corporation as one where no part of its, its income is distributable as dividends to its members, trustees, or officers. Okay? Walang income. Okay? So, a uh, stock corporation that's incorporated for profit. Okay? The stockholders get the profit through dividends. No? While a non-stock corporation is organized primarily for charitable, religious, educational, fraternal, literary, trade, industry, or agriculture chambers, no? or any combination of those things I mentioned. Okay? Now, uh, stock corporations may further be classified into par-value corporations, no? par-value, okay? where the par-value of the shares, no? The par value is stated in the Articles of Incorporation and that value, it remains generally unchangeable. Why? Because it's stated nga in the Articles, no? Nakasulat na. So you do not change the value, okay? Unless you amend the Articles, probably. We'll go to that later on, okay? So we have par value corporations and we have no par value stock corporations, okay? These are uh, the ones who have stocks where the issue value of those stocks change from time to time, okay? And is left to the discretion of the corporation to determine, okay? We'll talk about shares uh, later on, probably in the next, uh, in the succeeding videos, okay? So, uh, let's move on. Now, we also have uh, what is known as uh, the Hure Corporation. De Hure, J-U-R-E, okay? These are created uh, following the strict or uh, substantial uh, conformity with the mandat mandatory statutory requirements. Now, they follow the requirements of the law, okay? The requirements of the law for incorporation, okay? So, uh, their right to exist as a corporation cannot be attacked, okay, or questioned by any party even in a direct proceeding for that purpose, okay? So, uh, you cannot simply go and say, you cannot go to court and uh, ask the court to say that this corporation does not exist, no? Okay, they can successfully resist that, no? Okay, while uh, in contrast, we have a de facto corporation, okay? If we have the Hure, we have de facto, okay? A de facto corporation is uh, defectively formed, may defect sa paggawa niya, okay? It's defectively formed from a bona fide attempt to incorporate under the law and it exercises corporate powers. Okay? So, let's say there's a list of requirements and it has substantially complied with that but it missed out on uh, certain something that is not necessary for the corporation to exist. In that case, it's a de facto corporation. No, It is organized with colorable compliance with the requirements of the law and the effect is its existence cannot be inquired into collaterally okay in other words it's you can only question its existence in what is known as a co waranto proceeding co waranto q u o waranto okay so uh, a common exam or uh, recitation question involving the Hure versus de facto uh, corporations 
involves a scenario where a corporation is being incorporated, then it transacted business, but for one reason or another, it failed to file its bylaws on time with the Securities and Exchange Commission or the SEC. Okay? It's usually the bylaws, no? Because the bylaws are not uh, mandatory uh, requirement for uh, incorporating. I'll talk about this in another video, okay? Uh, just take note of my, what I'm saying now, okay? So, in that case where the corporation is being incorporated, no? And uh, the incorporators fi failed to file the bylaws on time, okay? There is still nevertheless substantial compliance with the law on incorporation, provided of course the mandatory requirements are uh, met, no? And since the corporation transacted business, it will now be considered a de facto corporation, okay? So, let's say you know all that, okay? Knowing the law is different from knowing how to apply the law, which is the point if you want to be a uh, good lawyers or you want to pass your accounting exam, okay? It's not enough that you memorize, you have to know how to apply it. So what if you know that uh, the corporation is a de jure corporation or is a de facto corporation or a corporation which does not exist? Okay? So here in the, the case that I just mentioned, no, that the corporation failed to file its bylaws, right, I said that it's a de facto corporation. So what's the implication? The implication is that any party cannot attack the existence of the corporation collaterally. Okay? What does that mean collaterally? It just means that uh, it cannot be the existence of the corporation cannot be attacked. Let's say like a side dish, no? May ulam ka, may side dish ka. Itlog kunyare, no? Or uh, kung kunyare uh, you uh, you like some gyupsal, whatever a side dish. Okay. In other words, like if the main case is for collection of a sum of money, no, against this corporation, that's your main case, no? Please pay me this. You cannot. As a side argument, say, by the way, this corporation does not exist, huh? cannot do that, okay? Because you respect the separate juridical personality of the corporation, okay? You can only attack the existence, the legitimacy of the corporation, uh, of a de facto corporation, through a co waranto proceeding, okay? That's important. Now, another common question is where, uh, let's say, a stockholder or an officer of the de facto corporation is being held liable in his personal capacity, okay? So, uh, let's say there's an obligation and then the, uh, the obligor, the creditor, uh, the creditor no, is asking to be paid. Hey, pay me. Uh, he's asking this certain stockholder who he talked to to pay him personally, no? So in that case, if those are the facts of the case, no, you have to check whether the corporation is truly a de facto corporation or if it was never incorporated at all. Remember, if uh, it misses out on a mandatory requirement, like it does not fail the articles of incorporation, the corporation did not exist, okay, because it failed to uh, comply with one of the mandatory requirements, okay? That's an important difference, okay? Because if the corporation is a de facto corporation, it will still have a separate juridical personality. And if it has a separate juridical personality, this gives rise to the limited liability principle no, on the part of the stockholders or officers. Remember in my previous episode, no, na the limited liability means that the debts of the corporation are not the debts of its stockholders or members, okay? Now, if it is a de facto corporation, because let's say it failed to file uh, the bylaws, no, on time, okay? So, the implication of that is that there is a separate juridical personality, the corporation exists, yun nga lang, de facto siya. And since it exists, it has a separate personality, and therefore the stockholder should not be held personally liable. You, you understand? Okay, I hope you understand, no? So, uh, let's say what was not filed, on the other hand, is the one of the mandatory requirements, like the Articles of Incorporation. That's a mandatory requirement for uh, incorporation, no? So, there is no substantial compliance with the law for incorporation, okay? Therefore, the implication of uh, failing to comply with that mandatory requirement is that no corporation exists at all. 
okay? It was never created. There is no separate personality and therefore, that individual stockholder can be held personal, personally liable because there's no corporate bill. There's no corporation. So you hold that person liable. Okay? However, also take note, the, uh, for better protection of the third person or the creditor, okay, uh, for the better protection of the third person or creditor, he is the one who can hold either the stockholder or the even the fake corporation liable through how? Through the principle of corporation by estoppel. Okay? The, that's what uh, the principle will go to right now. Okay? Now, a corporation by estoppel, okay, is, uh, happens where a group of persons, no, let's say these uh, four people, no, uh, five people, no, okay, a group of persons, they assume to act as a corporation, okay, but these people, they know that they're not a corporation, okay, they didn't file the AOI, whatever, or they didn't even do anything at all, okay, now they enter into a transaction with this guy, Okay, on the third person, no? Pretending that they are a corporation, okay? Now, if this guy wants to hold them liable as a corporation or even individually, they cannot say that, hey, no, there's no corporation, so you cannot hold us liable. No, okay? The law will protect the interests of this third person who relied on the representation of these people that there was a corporation, Okay? It can, this, uh, these people cannot be permitted to deny their, the existence of the corporation if an action is filed against them for the transaction, okay? So, uh, in this case, that, corpora that corporation by estoppel is neither a de jure nor a de facto corporation. It's not any one of those, okay? And under section 20 of the code, all persons who assume to act as a corporation knowing it to be without authority to do so shall be liable as general partners for all debts, liabilities, and damages incurred or arising as a result thereof. Liable as general partners. If you watched my series on that, it just means that these people, no, these five people, can be held subsidiarily liable. Subsidiarily meaning after the fake corporations assets have been uh, exhausted no they can be held subsidiarily liable with their separate property kahit sa bahay lupa kotse etc nila okay now uh, also take note that the section 20 says that when any such uh, ostensible corporation is sued on any transaction entered by it okay as a corporation or any tort quasi delic no committed by it as such it shall not be allowed to use uh, on any uh, it shall not be allowed to use its lack of uh, corporate personality as a defense okay meaning let's say it committed a tort no or uh, uh, it sued for a transaction no it cannot say hey you cannot hold me liable because we do not exist no okay the law will protect the interests again of the third person and treat them as a corporation by estoppel in order to hold the, their assets uh, liable and also to hold them individually liable, okay? Anyone who assumes an obligation to an ostensible corporation as such cannot resist uh, performance thereof on the ground that there was in fact no corporation, okay? So uh, that part now says if uh, this third person is the one indebted to this corporation, okay? He's the one who's supposed to pay. He cannot now say, I don't have to pay you because there's no corporation. He still has to pay, okay? So, uh, do not be confused, okay? It is not the fake corporation or the members uh, of that uh, fake corporation that can, claim, that can claim, hey, we're a corporation by estoppel, no? The corporation by estoppel principle is meant for the protection of third persons, no? And it is therefore the injured third person, okay? Take note, that injured, he must have suffered injury. In the last example I mentioned, no? That third person is the one who's indebted to the corporation and is claiming, hey, corporation, you, you're, there's no such corporation, so I'm not liable to you. In that case, he cannot claim it. Why? He's not injured, okay? He has to have suffered damage. Here, he is the one who owes the corporation, so he will still be liable. 
okay? Now, on the other hand, the members of the corporation cannot also claim that, hey, we're a corporation by estoppel to evade their obligation to the third person, no? If they're the ones indebted to him, okay? It is not a defense. So do not be uh, confused, no? It is only the injured party who has suffered damage who can claim that uh, there is a corporation by estoppel and I want to hold you liable, okay? I am holding you liable as a corporation and in case your assets are not enough with your separate properties, no? To pay for the damage you have caused by making me believe that you are a corporation, okay? So again, a corporation, although irregularly organized and even if not actually existing, may be sued, okay? Pwedeng kasuhan, okay? Uh, it can be sued as a legal person in order to hold it and its members liable under the principle of estoppel, okay? Now, we also have what is known as a uh, corpora corporation by prescription or one which has exercised corporate powers for an indefinite period of time without interference from the sovereign power. One example would be the Roman Catholic Church, okay? We also have classifications of uh, corporations according to the laws of incorporation, okay? Uh, mean laws of the place of incorporation, no? And I discussed the tests in my previous episode, no? So, uh, we have a domestic corporation, no? Which is, uh, of course, domestic, no? Uh, it's formed, organized, or exists under Philippine laws, okay? And the foreign corporation under uh, Section 140 is one formed, organized, or existing under any laws other than the laws of the Philippines. And whose laws allow Filipino citizens and corporations to do business in their own country or state. Again, huh? I explained this in a previous video, we follow the incorporation test, the place of incorporation test, unless the question pertains to investment or determination of compliance with the rules on allowable foreign equity, like the 60-40 uh, requirement or uh, no foreign equity requirement, uh, etc. No? Under the Constitution, and the Foreign Investments Act, okay? In which case, we do not use the place of incorporation test. Instead, we use the control test as supplemented by the grandfather rule. Main test, control test, and grandfather rule only if there is doubt as to the uh, percentage of Filipino equity, okay? Now, uh, as to whether they are open to the public or not, we have open corporations which are open to uh, any person who may wish to become a stockholder or member by uh, buying stocks, no? And we also have a closed corporation which under Section 95 of the Code, no? Has articles of incorporation which provide that first, no? All the corporations issued stock of all classes except treasury shares shall be held off record by not more than a specified number of persons not to exceed 20. Okay, 20 or less lang ang pwedeng humawak ng stock nila. Second, all the issued stock of all classes shall be subject to one or more specified restrictions on transfer permitted by this title. May restrictions on transfer. Hindi basta pwedeng, hindi basta basta kahit sino pwede maging member. No? You, there are restrictions as stated, no? Uh, stated uh, in the share, no? Stay, saying that if you're gonna transfer this share only to uh, these kind of people, no? You cannot transfer it to uh, these kinds of people, etc. Okay, I'll talk more about closed corporations uh, in another episode, okay? And finally, no? The ne next requirement in the articles is that the corporation shall not list in any stock exchange or it will not make any public offering of its stocks, okay, of any class. Para madali, close, close corporation, kayo kayo lang. This is common in family corporations, no? Where uh, only the members of the family are also the members or stockholders of that corporation, okay? Take note that the law expressly prohibits mining, oil companies, 
stock exchanges, banks, insurance companies, public utilities, educational institutions, and corporations declared to be vested with public interest from being organized as a closed corporation. Okay, those corporations cannot be closed corporations. Okay. Now, uh, corporations may also be classified according to management and control. Okay, we have holding corporations, no, and these control subsidiary subsidiaries, no, by the power to elect the management of those subsidiaries, no. The holding corporation they hold stocks in other companies for control rather than uh, mere investment. Okay, a subsidiary corporation, naman is one which is so related to another corporation that the majority of its directors can be elected either directly or indirectly by such other corporation and therefore is always controlled. Okay? It is a corporation uh, more than 50% of the voting stock of which is owned or controlled directly or indirectly through one or more intermediaries by another corporation which is usually the parent company, okay? Now, an affiliate corporation, no? Is one which is related to another by owning or being owned, okay? By common management or by a long-term lease of its properties or some other uh, control device, no? That long-term lease is a control device, no? So, it may be controlled, it may be the controlled or the controlling corporation, and it can even be under common control. And finally, we have the parent corporation. Simply put, it's the one that has the controlling financial interest in one or more corporations. Okay. Now, uh, as to the number of persons composing a corporation, we have an aggregate corporation, no? which can have more than one person or member. But we also have, okay, we also have. Uh, Corporations which only have one person. Okay, first we have a corporation sole. And under section 108 of the code, okay, a corporation sole consists of only one person or member, okay, and it may be formed by the chief archbishop, bishop, priest, minister, rabbi, or other presiding elder of such religious denomination. Okay? denomination, sect, or church for the purpose, this is what you take note of the purpose of administering and managing as a trustee okay, the affairs, property and the temporalities of any religious denomination sect or church okay, I'll talk about that more later on okay, but take note, under the current law we have another kind of corporation that allows for uh, only one member this is a new, uh, a new development in the law. No, we have what is known as a one-person corporation. Okay, which is uh, previously, if you wanted to be the only one in the uh, doing the business, you would just have to be a sole proprietorship. Okay, in which case, uh, it's uh, the downside to it compared to a corporation is there is no uh, separate corporate veil, which uh, separate personality which will give you limited liability, meaning in a sole proprietorship, you can be held liable even after the assets of the proprietorship have uh, been exhausted. You can be held liable for uh, debts and obligations up to your own separate property, no? Uh, your house, your car, etc. No? But now we have a one-person corporation under the current law, which uh, gives the added protection of the separate corporate uh, personality, no? In which case, the corporation's uh, liabilities are its own and the stockholder's liabilities are his own. He will not be held liable for the debts of the, corp the one-person corporation, no? Unless, of course, there is a reason to pierce the veil, okay? So, uh, the one-person corporation is defined under Section 116 of the Code, no? Simply as a corporation with a single stockholder okay now this one person corporation can only be formed by a natural person okay by a trust or by an estate no estate of the deceased okay now I'll talk about the one person corporation in a different video no I'll uh, explain more about that in uh, its incorporation etc okay but just take note that the law 
expressly prohibits banks, quasi-banks, pre-need, trust, insurance, public and publicly listed companies, and non-chartered government-owned and controlled corporations from forming one-person corporations. Those cannot uh, form one-person corporations, okay? And also take note further that a natural person who is licensed to exercise a profession like uh, being a lawyer or an accountant, no? A CPA, no? Okay? They may not engage, they may not organize as a one-person corporation for the purpose of exercising their profession, no? Like mag ka lang, law firm, okay? They may not uh, organize except as otherwise provided under a special law. In other words, the only time that a lawyer, let's say, can uh, make a law firm as a one-person corporation huh, is if there is a special law allowing that lawyer to create a one-person corporation. Okay? Now, uh, corporations may be organized for religious purposes, in which case they are eccles ecclesiastical corporations, and if for non-religious uh, purposes, they are simply lay corporations. If a corporation is established for or devoted to a charitable purpose, then it is a an uh, L L M L -E L M O C N R corporation. Okay. Uh, if it is established for profit, it's a civil corporation. And uh, finally, we also have condominium corporations, which are private corporations organized for the construction of a building with complete living or office units which it sells creating therein full ownership for the buyers of the units sold and a co-ownership over the land and the common areas of the building which is why you pay association dues no to uh, take care of those common areas okay so uh, that's it for the classifications or classes of Corporations. I hope you may have picked up a thing or two. And I hope to see you uh, next time, guys. Okay? See you soon. Bye.